Amen. Amen. Why don't we all say amen? Let us say amen again. We welcome you to our Tuesday night insight once again. We thankful. Uh, we are thankful for those that are here physically and those of you who are in our cyber sanctuary. This is the Mount Horo DeSoto Missionary Baptist Church, and I am privileged to serve as pastor. And I am thankful for those of you who have uh, joined us on tonight. We're not going to waste your time. We're going to go ahead and have our devotion, and then we'll jump right into the lesson for tonight. Our deacons are coming. Our very faithful and humble deacons are coming with our devotion. Amen, amen. Our scripture reading this evening comes from Psalms 100. God, it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. It is he, well, I'm sorry. It is, he is God. It is he that has made us, yeah. and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, yeah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, yes. and into his courts with praise. Mm -hmm. Be thankful unto him, and be and bless his name, for the Lord is good. Yeah. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for allowing us to gather here once again, Lord. We thank you, Father, for waking us up in our right mind, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for our pastor, Lord. We oh, thank yeah. you for our executive pastor, Lord, and we pray, Lord, as we continue to move from being religious to becoming righteous, Lord, we ask that you would continue to give us strength, Lord, to continue on and don't throw in the towel, Lord. Oh, Lord. We know we go through some tedious times mm -hmm. today, Lord. There's trouble all around us, Lord, yeah. and, and, and there are many tragedies that come our way, but we know that you can turn all of our tragedies into triumphs. Oh, so, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace, Lord. We just ask you to, to be in the midst of this service tonight, Lord, yeah. as we prepare to study your word, Lord. Walk with us, Lord, and, and continue to guide us, Lord, and let us love one another like you've loved the Father, Lord, and to be obedient to you as you are obedient to the Father. We yeah. just ask you to have your way in and through each of our lives, Lord. Go with us and guide us, and we forever give your name the praise and all the honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, deacons, for our devotion. Uh, my brothers and sisters, our lesson for tonight uh, is really a lot uh, that I want to uh, get through on tonight, but we'll see how our time, uh, how our time look as we go throughout this lesson. But I really wanted to uh, introduce and really talk about <coughs> the life of King Asa, and I've done many of sermons and many of uh, teachings uh, in these two chapters, and so tonight is, is my intentions to go uh, throughout two chapters which will uh, hold the life of King Asa, but if we can't make it, then I'll just have to break it up in two parts, uh, but, but I call your attention to the book of Second Chronicles. Uh, Second Chronicles in two chapters will uh, hold our scripture uh, text for uh, the night and maybe uh, another night also, but it's chapters 14 through 16. I know, I know, I know you're saying, hold on, Reverend, that's a whole lot uh, to go through in one setting. Uh, we're going to try to do it. Be honest with you. Uh, I said this before, <coughs> that uh, the Lord has placed on my heart uh, to write a book uh, uh, pertaining this life of King Asa, and uh, he's already given me uh, the chapters. And so uh, for this moment in time that we want to share, 
I really want to just go over these chapters with you and just walk this text and let's see if, uh, uh, if we can learn some things from the life of King Asa. And so we want to talk from this topic. Uh, if Asa could talk, yeah, if Asa could talk, uh, because I believe if he were living in 2021, uh, along with going throughout this stuff that he went through in these uh, two chapters that we're going to be looking at, I think, Dr. Nash, that Asa would have some things to say to us as it pertains to our Christianity. And I, I, I just want to know, are you interested? Are you are you interested in what Asa has to say vicariously through, uh, through the word of God to us? Because I believe that there are some pertinent things uh, that happen in this life of King Asa uh, that will help us out in our spiritual journey as we aim to move from religion to righteousness. I, I believe that if we focus on this life of King Asa, it would help us out because Asa, my brothers and sisters, and don't 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 quote me on this because I didn't. Uh, I've looked it up before, but I'm just going off the top of my head right now. Uh, but I'm pretty sure, pretty sure. Look at your neighbor and say he's pretty sure. He's pretty sure that King Asa is the third king of Judah. You do remember when. Israel split up. Uh, ten tribes went north and two tribes went south. And those two tribes that went south are Judah. That is what is called Judah. That's the tribes of Benjamin and the tribes of Judah. They joined forces and went south. And then the other ten sons of Israel, they went north and formed Israel. And so at this point, you have Israel. And then you have Judah. And King Asa is, uh, I believe so. I'm pretty sure on it. You can look it up. You can Google it. Look it up. I'm pretty sure, if my memory serves me correctly, that he is the third king of Judah after they uh, split. And so it's, it's with my intentions on tonight. To, we're going to start with ver uh, chapter 14. Uh, verse number one, and we're going to walk this text all the way until time is up because I believe that Asa has some things to say to us as it pertains to his life. And so, my brothers and sisters, first of all, we jump right into the text. First of all, the first chapter of uh, this book, my brothers and sisters, that God has placed on my heart, this first chapter is that reliance matters. <clears throat> reliance matters, my brothers and sisters. That's, that's the first thing that King Asa would say to us if he was living in 2021 is that Mount Horeb, reliance, and let me just, let me, let me make it more uh, pointed if I can. Reliance on God matters. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of movements nowadays. Black lives matter and blue lives matter. All lives matter. Uh, children lives matter. Everything is about something mattering. But can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, and no slight on any of those movements, but all of those movements should come after our reliance on God. Oh, uh, yeah, those other movements should suffer for what I call the salsa ministry because of our reliance on God and because of our dependence on God. Then those other matters get the overflow of our love from God first. Oh, uh, yeah. And so if Asa was standing here right beside me now, he would he would ask me, let me. Let me take the mic and let, and let me share with the folk of some things that will happen. And the first thing that he would say to us, Dr. Nash, is that reliance on God matters. But I didn't make it up. It's in these two chapters. The first, the first portion of this 14th chapter, verses 1 through 11. And I won't take the time to read all of it. 
Uh, but but no, matter of fact, I will because you may not read it on your own. And so just for that purpose, allow me to read uh, from this translation of the Bible, the Gene Getz translation. It reads a little different from uh, the King James Version, but it's a lot, it's, 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 you can understand it a lot better than you can uh, the King James Version. And so Asa would tell us, my brothers and sisters, that reliance on the Lord matters. And I said I was going to read it, but I'll I take that back. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to just tell you why reliance matters. Because if you look at the life of King Asa and you look at verse number two and the first portion of, well, verse number two by itself, it simply says Asa did what was good and right in the sight of the Lord his God. My brothers and sisters, Asa relied on the Lord while he was uh, the king of Judah. He, he, he started out good. He started out wonderful because he was relying on the Lord. But we can also understand why he relied on the Lord. The text says that when he became, when his father died, Abijah, Ab, Ab, Abijah, when Abijah, that's really how it's pronounced in its original language, when Abijah, uh, Abijah uh, died, then he was buried in Jerusalem. And then the text says in verse 1 that Asa became the king in his place. And then it says during his reign, the land experienced 10 years of peace. My brothers and sisters, when you find yourself relying on God, then God will do some miraculous things in your life. It doesn't matter what you're going through on this side. It doesn't matter what's happening in your life. When you find yourself at all points relying on God, I did say, look at your neighbor and say all points. That means the good times and the bad times, the hard times and the easy times. When reliance on the Lord happens, then, of course, Asa going to have some more things to say to us as it pertains to our reliance. But first, he would say the first thing that we need to do, if we're going to be the men, women, and boys and girls that God has called us to be, the first thing is to rely on him. And the Bible says that because of his reliance on him when he started out, that God gave him 10 years of peace. Now, when you look at 10 years of peace, you have to place yourself in those times. Oh, yeah, that's why I told you I like Game of Thrones because it reminds me of these times of the Old Testament. And when you look at uh, uh, this pericope, the life of Asa, when the Lord gave him the 10 years of peace, that simply means that no one came and tried to war against Judah during those times, that 10 years. They gave him peace. And so while the Lord gave him peace, what Asa did was he decided, well, okay, well, since we got this peace, it's, it's in the text. I'm just paraphrasing. Since we, the Lord has given us peace, let's Take this time and build up walls around the city. Let's take this time and fortify ourselves for whenever those situations for war may arise. And so he did those things. If you look, he said, after he said the Lord, uh, after he did what was good and right in the sight of the Lord, then the text tells us he removed the pagan altars and the high places. He shattered their sacred pillars and Chopped, them, chopped down their Asherah uh, poles and told the people of Judah to seek the Lord God of their ancestors and carry out the instructions and the commands. He also removed the high places and the incense altars from the cities of Judah and the kingdom experienced peace under him. Oh, yeah, you, you do see when he relied on the Lord, he did things that were conducive to his reliance. And so he removed a lot of things that would cause the people that he was king over to fall in their reliance. And then the text goes on to say, because the land experienced peace, Asa built, uh, built fortified cities in Judah, 
No one may war with him in those days because the Lord gave him rest. Verse number seven. And he said to the people of Judah, let's build these cities and surround them with walls and towers, with doors and bars. The land is still ours because we have sought the Lord our God. We sought him and he gave us rest on every side. So, so they built and succeeded. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when you rely on the Lord, he will do some miraculous things in your life. I wish I had some help up in here. But then here it is, my brothers and sisters, in his reliance after the 10 years of peace had passed, after they had fortified the cities, after they had built the walls and, and, and the doors and bars of the city, then verse number eight says, Asa, that it, it tells us of his army. He said Asa had an army of 300,000 men from Judah bearing spe uh, large shields and spears and 280,000 from uh, Benjamin bearing uh, regular shields and drawing the bow. All of these were brave warriors. My brothers and sisters, this, this, this army that Asa had is now 580,000 strong. He had a lot of men. It was uh, 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 when his his great grandfather his grandfather started out with uh, a thousand uh, one hundred thousand men, but 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 because of his reliance on God, God built that army to five hundred and eighty thousand men of Judah, and so he had a a a a plethora, if I can say it like that, a plethora of men on his side. But then uh, verse number nine says, then after they named the, 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 the soldiers that he had, verse number nine says, then Zerah the Cushite came against them with an army of one million men. I believe in the King James Version, it says a thousand thousand men, which is simply one million. But, 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 but Zerah the Cushite came to him with, with one million men and 300 chariots, and they came as far as Marishah. So, er, uh, so Asa marched out against him and lined up in battle formation in the valley of Zepatath at Marishah. My brothers and sisters, Asa relied on the Lord in the time of peace. And, but can I tell you that just because you've made up in your mind to rely on the Lord, that is no guarantee that your life is going to be a bed of roses after that, my brothers and sisters. In the Dallas Baptist Ministers Union meeting today, we talked about the doctrine of suffering. And, and, and what we came to the conclusion of was that suffering has a part to play in each and every one of our lives. Oh, yeah, the preacher called it the needle of suffering because suffering does things for us. We take it as a negative plot, a negative thing when we have to suffer. But can I tell you that God is doing some things when we are suffering? There is some surprises in our suffering. Oh, uh, yeah, you may ask, well, why? As a matter of fact, you may ask the question of theodicy. Theodicy is simply that question that says, how can an all-knowing, all-good God allow such bad things to happen to us individually on this earth? Yes, when you're going through your suffering, you may ask that one question, how is it, God, that I gave my life to you? How, how is it, God, that I'm relying on you? But then whenever I turn around, I have to deal with some suffering. I'm glad you asked because when we look at the life of Jesus Christ, oh, he suffered, my brothers and sisters. Yes, he suffered from the scribes and Pharisees talking down on his name. Yes, you may ask why folk always talking down on my name. Look at the life of Jesus. They talked about Jesus. That matter of fact, somebody said once said when folk are talking about you, you tell them what well, they talked about Jesus too. Yeah, yeah. And so and so and so it is after this peace had 
had, had surpassed, then, then Zerah the Cushite came and uh, waged war against Judah. And so let me, uh, let me show you what background studying does when you don't just read your Bible just as it is written, but when you study the word. See, the, the, the Bible has the King James Version and this version. It has Zerah, the Ethiopian, or Zerah, the Cushite. Ethiopia and Cush are the same place. But when you really look at the dynamics of what's going on and you do some background studying, we'll soon find out that Zerah, that this wasn't an Ethiopian army. Oh, no, it wasn't the Ethiopian army because Zara the Cushite, uh, yes, he was a mercenary, my brothers and sisters. He was fighting for Egypt. Yes, so it was uh, a war against Egypt, as a matter of fact, because Zara the Cushite, he was the commander of the army under o Osorskin II. Rev, Rev, you ever heard of that name? Okay, or or or, or, or Zorskin the second. He was the pharaoh of Egypt, and so Zara the Ethiopian had made his way, him and some other folk from Ethiopia, and fought in on the side of Egypt. Because when you really look at at, at the way the land is structured back in those days, you just couldn't waltz through somebody else's territory. To get somewhere else. And when you think about where, where Asa is, where Judah is, and then you have Egypt, then you have Ethiopia. And so in order for the Ethiopians to attack Judah, they would have to go through Egypt. And they wasn't, they wasn't having that, my brothers and sisters. That, that's just like Game of Thrones, Brother Smith. Yes, you, you couldn't just waltz through somebody else's territory to get somewhere else, but then you had to barter and negotiate passage with the other territory. And so it was pretty much impossible for Ethiopia to attack Judah for that simple fact. And so that's what extra studying does. It brings things into perspective, my brothers and sisters. And so lean over and tell your neighbor, don't just read the Bible, study it. Yeah, don't, don't just read the Bible, study it so that you can get a complete understanding of what's going on. And so after his reliance on the Lord, after that 10 years of peace passed, and then he was brought uh, uh, against a large army. We'll just say that because there are, there are some schools of thought that says uh, Zara and Orskin are, are, are names, synonymous. they are the same names. And then there's a school of thought that says Zerah was a mercenary and he was fighting on the behalf of Egypt. But we'll just say he came up against this great army and they, they set in battle array, ready to go to war, ready to fight. That's like Deacon Smith uh, Deacon Smith and Deacon Gibson, when you're in high school and, and somebody wants to fight you, you'll draw a line and say what? Cross that line. I, I, no, I ain't going to say that. I, 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 I want you to cross the line because once you cross, oh, you'll take a stick and put it on your shoulder and say knock it off if you want to. Knock it off if you want to. And so, so, so these, these Egyptians and Zara the Ethiopian, they have set in battle array, ready to attack King Asa, all while he's relying on the Lord. But, 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 but if King Asa was standing here today, not only would he say that reliance on the Lord matters, but then he says after relying on the Lord, after the reliance is mattering, then secondly, rewards materialize. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm just giving you the outline of the book that I'm going to do sometime in the future. First chapter is reliance. Second chapter is reward. And we find Asa's reward because of his reliance through in verses 12 through 15 of this 14th chapter. Verse 12 says, so the Lord, right, no, I'm, I'm sorry, go back to 11 because 11 is a crucial point of this study because after they came and set up in battle formation ready to attack Judah 
What Asa did was the same thing Nehemiah did, Sister Davis. Yeah, the same thing he did. He prayed to the Lord, his God. Verse number 11 says, Then Asa cried out to the Lord, his God, and he said, Lord, uh, there is none beside you uh, to help the mighty and those without strength. Please help us, O Lord our God, for we depend on you, and in your name we have come against this large army. Yahweh, you are our God. Do not let a mere mortal hinder you. That was his prayer. Once they set up in battle formation, he didn't run to go get his spear. He didn't run to tell the men that they set up. They were they ready to fight. No, the, what he did was cried out to the Lord. And Asa would tell us that when you find yourself in situations, when you have done what you're supposed to do as a Christian, when you have relied on the God of our salvation, and things still don't happen the way that you feel they ought to happen, the next thing to do is to talk to God about it. Yeah, talk to somebody that can do something about the situation. See, we fall short because we talk to everybody else. And then when everybody else haven't given us the answer that we want or that we're looking for, then we talk to the Lord. But when we mix match that thing, when we turn that thing around and talk to God first, and then we can sift and, sh and, 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 and sift out the things that are, are, aren't needed from other folk. Matter of fact, it's called eating the meat and throwing away the bone. Yeah, you can talk to everybody else after you talk to the Lord because now you're looking for what, what, uh, what, what, what is closely resembling what the word of God had to say. Hello. Yeah, and so that's what Asa did. He talked to the Lord. But then the Lord gave him the reward in verses 15, 12 through 15. And it says, so the Lord routed the Cushites before Asa and before Judah, and the Cushites fled. Verse 13, then Asa and the people that were with him pursued them as far as Gara, the Cushites fell until they had no survivors, for they were crushed before Yahweh and his army. So the people of Judah carried off a great supply of loot. Then they attacked all the cities around Gara because of the terror of the Lord was on them. They also plundered all the cities since there was a great deal of plunder in them. Then verse 15, they also attacked the tents of the herdsmen and captured many sheep and camel. Then they returned to Jerusalem. My brothers and sisters, when you rely on God, God does some uh, amazing things for us. He gives us a reward. He gives us uh, rewards for relying on him. I wish I, I could, I, 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 let me bring myself in the picture, if I can, my brothers and sisters, I, I relied on the Lord for a long time. And, 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 and it wasn't until his timing was right that he gave me the reward for my reliance. It wasn't in my time because I thought that I was ready to pastor a while ago. But God said, no, hold on. I told you a long time ago that God answers prayers in two ways, yes or no. But with that no, it has three sub answers in it. He says no, a grow, a slow. Yeah, grow, grow means that, that it ain't the right time. It, it, what you're praying for is it's not the right time. And, and slow, uh, uh, grow means, wait a minute, grow means it's not the right person. Yeah, you, you got to grow to the point where you can receive what God has for you. And then he says, no, meaning wrong request. Yeah, you prayed to God, but you prayed for the wrong thing. And so in turn, he says, no, wait, go back in, to the drawing board and get your prayer right. And then, and then we got something to work with. But then he says, slow, meaning wrong timing. Yeah, you asked for this at the wrong time. I asked for the Lord to make me a pastor at the wrong time. He still had some formulating 
to do, my brothers and sisters. And, and so it is with our own selves individually. There are some things that you have asked God for. And in turn, it seems like God has not answered your prayer. But could it be that it could be the wrong timing? Could it be it could be the wrong person? You have to grow some more. Could it be that it might be the wrong request? But the main thing that we ought to learn from the life of Asa is to keep praying. Keep on praying. Keep on growing. Keep on reading and studying your Bible. So I told you before that your prayers ought to contain some of God's language in it. Oh, yeah, your prayers ought to contain some Bible in it, my brothers and sisters, simply to let the Lord know, Lord, you promised that, 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 that you would make all things right. In, in our life. Lord, you promise that all things work together for the good of them that, that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. God, your word says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things that God has in store for those who love him. Lord, you said they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, yeah, when you're talking to the Lord, throw some of his language in your prayer and see how that works for you, my brothers and sisters, because when you do the things the way that God has mandated for us for it to go, then you don't have to worry about your suffering. Why? Because you know without a shadow of a doubt that in this life you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I've already overcome the world. So come on, talk about me I, all you want because I'm relying on the God of our salvation. Do me any way that you feel because I understand that suffering has a surprise in this life. Go on, lay me off from my job. I guarantee that sooner or later God will give me another job. Yeah, go on, walk out my life if you want to because God is going to replace. I wish I had some help up in here. Yes, he rewards. Matter of fact, the Bible says it this way. He is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. Diligently. Thank you, D. You're right. Diligently. That's, that's the key word of that verse, that, that diligently seek him. And so Asa, if he could talk today, if he was standing here today, he would tell us reliance matters because once reliance matters in our lives, then rewards can materialize. But then not only will he say that, and we're already getting almost to our quitting point, but, but, but thirdly, this third chapter of this book, uh, after reliance matters in your life and after rewards materialize in your life, then I believe if Asa was standing here, he would tell us, don't forget the reminding men. Oh, yeah, don't forget the reminding men. And you're asking me, well, Reverend, what are the reminding men? Well, I'm glad you asked because this is Clergy Appreciation Month. Oh, yeah, those are the reminding men. Because after, after, after King Asa experienced the, 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 the time of peace and after he built the city of uh, of, 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 of Jerusalem and, and after he did all, uh, after he prayed to the Lord, after that large host uh, came up against him and after the Lord, because of his reliance, rewarded him with, with the victory of 580,000 men going against one million men and, and he utterly destroyed them. After all this took place, then King Asa got a warning from the prophet Azariah. Oh, yeah, he got a reminder from the prophet Azariah. And so as we move from chapter 14 to chapter 15, the first, uh, the first seven verses tells us of this reminder that King Asa got 
from the prophet Azariah. Because verse number two starts out by saying, and uh, I'm sorry, the spirit of God, verse number one, the spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded. So he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin, hear me. The Lord is with you when you are with him. I wish I had somebody to say amen just on that little, that, that little sentence. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you abandon him, he will what? Abandon you. And then verse number three, and then he reminds him, he says, for many years, Israel had been without the true God, been without teaching priests and without instruction. But and then that, that, that word, but it means that's a transition word because he reminded him what happened in Israel of old. But then he says, but when they turn to the Lord, God of Israel, in their distress and sought him, he was found by them. In those times, there was no peace for those who went about their daily activities because the residents of the land had many conflicts. Nation was crushed by nation, city by city, for God troubled them with every possible distress. But as for you, talking to King Asa, as for you, be strong, don't be discouraged, for your work has a reward. Oh, uh, yeah, my brothers and sisters, it's... It's amazing how after this God-given victory, that congratulations didn't come from the, from the, uh, uh, from, from the prophet of the Lord. But yet, not, uh, not congratulations, but he warned Asa not to get complacent. You do remember Asa relied on the Lord. And so the prophet comes back and tells him, to keep up that same reliance. Don't, don't, don't get complacent and think just because God has done this thing for you in your life that you can just go on with your life and forget about him. And so that's what the reminding men do every Sunday and every Tuesday, every Wednesday is tell, stand up to tell parishioners, don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. Oh yeah, don't Throw in the towel, my brothers and sisters, when things get a little hectic because God is still in the mix. We serve an all-powerful God who is able to do whatever he want to do, when he want to do it, wherever he wants to do it at. I wish I had some witnesses up in here that would say, yes, Reverend, I, I've been down to my last dime, but I went to the mailbox and there was a check. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. Yes, I, I thought I was about to get laid off from my job, but, but God stepped into that thing. And when I went to work the next day, they not only didn't lay me off from my job, but they turned around and gave me a raise at the same time. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. I wish I had some believers that know that God is able to do it. My, my brothers and sisters, he's able to pick your life up and turn you around. He's He's able to, to, to clean up the mess you've made out of life. He's able to do all the things that he has promised that he's able to do in his holy word. Yes, yeah, so Asa would tell us, don't forget the reminding men. Don't forget what the reminding men have to say, my brothers and sisters. And I don't like putting uh, emphasis on me like I'm just all important. I'm not. I have... I carry the word of God. That's what makes me important. Oh, that's what makes me uh, followable. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, but it sounds good. Followable. Because I follow the lead of the God of our salvation. And any preacher that follows the lead of God, you ought to find yourselves following in behind him because he cares for your soul. <laughs> yeah, I, amen, Reverend, say that. Amen, amen. He cares for your soul, my brothers and sisters. And so uh, moving right along, we're going we gonna to try to get through these last three chapters really, really quick. 
Because after, if Asa was standing here, he'll tell us that reliance matters. He'll tell us that rewards materialize when reliance matters. But then he'll tell us, don't forget the reminding men of our life. But then, fourthly, he'll tell us that after you get, after you get reminded from the men that God has put in place, then a response need to be made. Oh, yeah, because after he received the prophecy from Azariah, immediately, my brothers and sisters, if I could say it like that, immediately he made changes to Judah. It's right there in the text, verses 8 through 19. Tell gives us a long litany of things that he did after he got confronted by the prophet Azariah, and he made a response, my brothers and sisters. And that's all preachers are wanting the, the parishioners, the congregation to do, is to come, receive the word, and make a change. Yes, make a, a lasting vicissitude, if I could say it like that, my brothers and sisters, which simply means a change. That's a, that's a highfalutin waste of saying change, yes, has have a, a lifelong vicissitude because it's, it's one thing to hear what is being said, but it's another thing to implement in your life what has been heard. Oh, uh, yeah, I can remember Dr. Nash would say it all the time uh, that, 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 that he would like throughout the week after he's preached on Sunday, he'll like to run into his sermon during the week yes and so that's 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 the objective of preachers they you you can come up and say yeah reverend you show preach today yes yes that's fine thank you so much bless your heart but what the preacher wants to see is that after sunday you put that that sermon into action that's why we give three points and a close because it's palatable you can take it and 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 you can implement it in your personal life and so my brothers and matter of fact let me parenthetically pause right here to push a powerful point that's not in this pericope but it relates to all of us you do know that you cannot have faith without the preacher oh i'm in bible country my brothers and sisters the bible says faith comes by what hearing and hearing by the word of god the Bible also says, how shall they hear without a preacher? Oh, my brothers and sisters, can I, can I, can I, can I press the fact just for a little uh, a, a moment that we ought to be excited and static? We ought to be thankful for the preacher, pastor that God has placed in your life. If you don't believe in that pastor, then I'm, I tell you, you need to leave. Because as long as you're there and you're not believing in the hierarchy of the church, then you're no good to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So he tells us after uh, the reminder, after reliance, after the reward, after the reminder, then we ought to have a response to uh, the reminder. And, and what I found interesting about the life of Asa that that he was so uh, he he was so uh, dead set on doing what the prophet had reminded him that he even had the unmitigated gall to kick his grandmother up out of the temple because she had an Asheroth pole in her room. I wish that, come on, read the, read the text. I'm telling you, read it. He kicked, a matter of fact, I ain't going to have you read it. I'm going to read it for you. It says right here in verse number 16, it says, King Asa also removed Maka. Don't, don't hold me to that pronunciation. That's just what I'm seeing. That's his grandmother. His grandmother, Asa removed his grandmother from being queen mother because she had made an obscene image of Asherah. Oh, he meant what he said, my brothers and sisters. And can I tell you that, that when we make a commitment to God, that we ought to mean what we say. Because God uh, honors commitment. 
Oh, yeah, that's, that's why it's important for married folk to try to fight through all the hell and the turmoil to stay committed because God honors commitment. I told Sister Nash, I want us to grow old and feeble together. Oh, yeah, I, 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 wanna, I saw a shirt, Deacon Gibson. It was uh, an old man and an old woman walking together holding hands. And the shirt on the back, both of them, it said on, on the man's back, it says Ben. And then on the woman's uh, shirt in the back, it says together. They walking hand by hand with their back showing. And the shirt says, been together. And then on the man's shirt, it said 19. And on the woman's shirt, it said 20. Oh, they, they, I, I, that's the kind of stuff I want. We've been together for a long time, and they were still holding hands, my brothers. Why? Because God honors commitment. Yes, that's why I ask you all the time when, when you make commitments uh, for God, when you make commitments to do something for God, it's best to go on and handle up on that commitment because God will honor commitment. I was a system pastor of Mount Tabor for over 12 years, but I was committed to where God had placed me. And then overnight, he opened up Mount Horeb de Soto. Oh, I wish I had some help because I was committed to being the best exec I'm an executive pastor, assistant pastor that God would have me to be. And so when other folk came and said, well, you, need to t you just need to tell the pastor this. No, that ain't my job. My job is to do what he tells me to do. My job is to carry out the mission and the vision that he has. Oh, amen. Amen. All right. Moving quickly, moving quick, out the response, out the, out the, the reliance, the reward, the reminder, and the response, King Asa would tell us that, that to be careful of the rebellion. Oh, yeah, the, the, rebellious, the rebellious mistake, my brothers and sisters, because reliance matters, because after reliance matters, rewards materialize. Then after rewards materialize, then we remember the reminding men. After the reminding men have spoken to us, then a response need to be made because, uh, because it, once the response is made, you have to be careful of the rebellious mistake. Because in the life of King Asa, after he, 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 he acted on the response, then verse 16 starts out by telling us that he ends up uh, at war again, my brothers and sisters, except this time when he was in war, he did not rely on God just as he did in chapter 14. Because the Bible says that he made a pact. He took some things out of the altar of Jerusalem, out of the temple of Jerusalem, in order to set up a bond with a neighboring country to fight those that were coming up on war against him. And then another prophet comes to, to King Asa after he made the pact with the neighboring nation and totally forgot about the God of his salvation. Another prophet comes along and tells Asa of his rebellious nature. And, and, and when this reminding man came and told him what he did wrong, the, the Bible says in, in verse Number 10 of, verse, of chapter 16, that Asa got mad at the prophet and had him thrown in jail. You, you do realize, my brothers and sisters, when God has delivered you from something and you turn around and go back to that thing, that it multiplies in intensity. Oh, well, yeah. And so a a Asa rebelled against God, but not only did he rebel against God, but he rebelled against the man that was coming to remind him of his foolishness. Yeah. And so and so we got to be careful of the rebellious mistake. A lot of times we get the things that we want from the Lord and then we forget about him and all of his mandates because he's given us what we want. Instead of 
in the war in the time of peace as Asa did, we ought to start getting ourselves prepared, getting ourselves ready for when that next storm of life comes. Then we just sit on our high horse and act like ain't nothing wrong and and until the next time things come. But 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 Asa would tell us to be aware, be careful of the rebellious mistake. Well, why should we be careful of the rebellious mistake, King Asa? He was, he would say, I'm glad you asked because, because of my rebellious mistake. Lastly, the last chapter of this futuristic book is that repercussions manifest. Oh, yeah, after the rebellious mistake, repercussions manifest because uh, the, the, the Bible says as we end this life, of King Asa, it tells us in verse uh, number 11, it tells us, note the events of Asa's reign from beginning to end are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And then verse number 12, in the 39th year of his reign, Asa developed a disease in his feet and his disease became increasingly severe. Even, uh, yet even in his disease, he didn't seek the Lord, but only the physicians. You, you do see, not only did he turn his back on God, not only did he turn his back on the prophet, but then also he backdoored and turned his back on God again in his deathbed. He relied on the physician. My brothers and sisters, can I pause right there and let you know that we cannot put more reliance on the worldly things than we do on the God of our salvation. Yeah, and it ends by telling us, verse 13, Asa died in the 41st year of his reign and rested with his father. He was buried in his own tomb that he made for himself in the city of David. They laid him out in a coffin that was full of spices and various mixtures of prepared ointments. Then they made a great fire in his honor. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if Asa was here, he'll tell us that because of his life, he can tell us some things to do and some things not to do. And, and that's all I want to, to, to get get off in, get, get by in this book is that there are some things that we should do as Christian men, women, boys, and girls, but then there are some things that we shan't do. Can I say it like that? Shan't, uh, sh shouldn't, that's what I'm going to say. They, some things that we should not do as it pertains to uh, our Christianity. And so, like I said, we must rely on the Lord because reliance matters. And then after that uh, reliance has mattered in our life and we've made necessary precautions to make sure that we are relying on the Lord, then we can look forward to rewards materializing in our life. And rewards will materialize after we take heed to the reminding men. Reminding men tell us what we need to be careful of, where we need to steer, steer away from. And then after we take the advice of the reminding men, then we must uh, make some responses to what we heard. And then we ought to be careful of the rebellious mistake or lest we will get a repercussion manifested on our wig. In the, <laughs> in the words of my uncle, on our wig, we'll get repercussions from our actions. My brothers and sisters, I pray that you are blessed uh, by this uh, uh, futuristic endeavor. Uh, there are a whole lot of there are a whole lot of other things that can be said on each and every one of these points, but but I just wanted to take the time to go throughout this life of King Asa because I believe that it is very beneficial uh, to uh, Christianity as it pertains to the 21st century. Amen? Amen. Amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Did you like your conversation with King Asa on tonight? Amen. 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 I pray, I pray that, uh, that God will continue uh, to do only what he's able to do 
in our lives. And, and it takes some, some necessary things on our part in order uh, to be the men, women, boys, and girls that God has called us to be. So y'all pray for your pastor as we uh, endeavor on uh, authorship, <laughs> as we endeavor on authorship, uh, and, and look forward uh, to a little talk with King Asa to hit bookstores near you uh, sometime in the future. Amen? Amen, amen. With that being said, there may be someone uh, either in the house or in our cyber sanctuary uh, who has heard the lesson for tonight and would like to invite the Lord into their lives. Uh, this is your moment. Not only are we inviting you, uh, not only is it an invitation, um, but it's also uh, an invitation to, uh, uh, for our supplication servants to lift you up in prayer. And so if you're on our, in our cyber sanctuary and you have a prayer request, please just make those known in the comments section, and we will be happy to lift you up in prayer. If you're looking for a church home and you don't have a church home, Mount Horup is a wonderful church to be a part of, for we are all about uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ. We're all about the Great Commission and the Great Commandment here at this church, and so uh, we would love to have you as a part of this family. And if this is not the family of your choosing, we'll help you get to wherever you want to be, just as long as you are in the will of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, deacons. God bless you. We're now up to giving time. Uh, amen. This is the point where we can say in a tangible way uh, how much we rely on the Lord. You know, a lot of times we rely on our money more than we do the master. Amen, amen, Reverend, amen, we do. I, I'm in, I, that's why I say we. It, it's an all-inclusive thing. We, we rely on, on money more than we do the God of our salvation. And we can tell that by when, when we look at our, <laughs> look at our, our finance report. Amen. When we look at the finance report, uh, it tells us that uh, some of us are living off of off of the bare minimums as it pertains. Uh, amen. I'm not. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm just up here rambling while they're taking the offering. Uh, amen. Amen. But but we ought to be as consistent with God as we can be because he's consistent with us. Amen? Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. We're still honoring Dr. Nash uh, for those of you who, who may not have had anything to give on Sunday or maybe you missed the opportunity to say thank you to Dr. Nash in a tangible way. We'll still be receiving uh, 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 congratulatory gifts uh, for him throughout the month. And so uh, we have giving avenues. If you want to send it to the church, we'll make sure that Dr. Nash gets it. If not, you can, if you want to send it straight to him, his cash app and his Zelle information will be posted also in the comments section. So you'll feel free. Uh, to do it that way. Also, we're also going to be taking uh, uh, monies up to the end of the month for our graduates. We were blessed to be able to give them $300 a piece, uh, but I don't think that's sufficient enough. I think that we can do a little bit better. And so uh, throughout this month, we're going to be taking up uh, donations for our uh for our graduates as well. And at the end of the month, we'll give them something else uh, as well. Amen? Amen. Also, uh, they've been calling me. We have 
another 10 bags of uh, donations for the family we adopted. And uh, Deacon Gibson, Deacon Smith, we'll get together and figure out when we can go grab those 10 bags uh, to take them to uh, the school so that the family can get them. Also, if any of you got any more donations as far as clothes is concerned, let us know and we'll be happy to come and get them. Amen? Amen. Let us stand. Dr. Nash, you got anything to say to us? Amen. Amen. On Sunday, on Sunday, we're going to be honoring Dr. Nash again at the Mount Tabor Baptist Church at 945, uh, but we will be here for 1130. Amen. Amen. So if you want to tag along the Mount Table, come on. But we're looking for you here at 1130 on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, uh, just, just so I can share this with you, your pastor has, is now the, the newly, uh, newly, uh, I don't want to say elected because I want elected, but newly appointed. That's the word I'm looking for. Newly appointed Assistant General Secretary of the BMNE State Convention. Amen. Amen. I, I'm excited about what God is doing. I told you before, I'm moving slow on purpose, but God is moving tremendously fast. And that's the way I like it. I want him to open doors and then I can just walk right through. There's a song that says, watch me walk through. Amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard on tonight. God, we thank you for the trail that was blazed by Dr. S.C. Nash Sr. And it's because of that trail that was blazed that doors are opening left and right for the Mount Horeb DeSoto Missionary Church. God, we thank you for the jewel uh, of Dr. Nash. We thank you uh, for our elders whom we stand on the shoulders of. We ask, oh God, that you would help us to be the men, women, boys, and girls that you have called us to be. We ask and pray that throughout this life that you would allow us to remember that all things work together for our good, because we love you and we are called according to your purpose. So God, we want to say thank you for the offering that was given, received on tonight. Thank you for those who gave. Thank you for those who wanted to give and had none to give. God, we lift up each and every one in, in the building physically and in our cyber sanctuary. We ask that you will bless us individually as well as collectively as we aim to be about kingdom business here on earth. We ask and pray that as we leave this place, that you would encamp your angels around us, keep us all safe from all hurt, harm, or danger, protect us from all accidents and incidences. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us from now until forevermore. And God will be so ever mindful to give your name all the praise, and all the honor that it so rightfully deserves. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And all who love the Lord said amen. 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 amen.